Hey everybody, we're so glad that you're here again with us. We're gonna be sharing with you what our garden looks like right now during the first part of spring. I've been waiting and waiting to put this together for you and it's gonna be so amazing to see how these things have done in our backyard. And like I was saying in the video before, um, all of our annuals from last year are just coming back with a vengeance and so I'm really excited to show you that. Everything that you're gonna see in the garden right now is our things that have already been established in our garden. We haven't planted anything yet. I'm really excited to start the planting, but it's all been here. So let's just take a look. So you can follow me over here. We're gonna start over here on this side. And this is our dwarf Meyer lemon right here. And uh, it's just full of blooms, doing great. The bees love this thing. They've been going crazy. I think what I'm gonna do here soon is I'm going to cut this back just a little bit, trim it up from the bottom to give a really good airflow. And hopefully we'll end up with a lot of lemons this summer and into um, next season. So that's gonna be really cool to see how this does. I'm probably gonna come by with a little bit of citrus tone as well and fertilize it. I usually do that once a year. So I'll just kind of rough up the ground around there, put some citrus tone in, really soak it nicely. And I think it'll have all that it needs to put on a lot of fruit because right now it's fully loaded and it looks like it's gonna do an amazing job this year creating a huge har harvest for us. So anyways, that's that interesting story about these two things. This is the Supertunia Vista bubblegum that I did a video and a review on a couple weeks ago. And as you can tell, as I was saying in that video, it just went absolutely nuts. This is just a five gallon pot that I planted two plants in um, two years ago. And I cut it back like crazy. And as soon as spring hit and it started warming up around here, it just has gone completely nuts. This is a uh, Supertunia, I believe it's a limoncello. And I had, it's looking pretty sickly, but it's blooming like crazy. Funny story about this is I wanted to replace the um, plants on the wall over here that I have in my hanging pots. And so I just, this one was looking really nice still. So I just took it from the hanging pot and planted it in this larger pot. And it's done a great job. I'll probably replace that eventually, but man, it's, it's blooming and I have done really hardly anything to it, not even fertilizing it, just keeping it watered here and there. And look at that. It's amazing. In this pot right here, we have our strawberries that are coming back and they're starting to set some strawberries like right here. We got one and I think there's a couple more in here, but anyways, it's full of blooms. Pretty soon we'll have strawberries. Really looking forward to that. Um, strawberries nice and easy to take care of especially in a big pot like this i think we have five plants in here and um, i come in and i in the springtime which i haven't done so yet but and i fertilize it with some berry tone clear out some of the old debris and this way it gives it that airflow to do what it needs to do anyways that's going to be a lot of fun to see how those do all right so moving over to this little back corner that we put in a couple years ago and i mean Look at this, you guys, this is like crazy. Of course, it's full of weeds. I haven't done anything to this yet at all, but the Nemesia, the Aromance pink Nemesia is just going crazy and um, doing really well. So it's really hard to rip that out, but I am gonna have to come in here and clean that out because I have something else planned for this area. And part of the other reason why I'm gonna clear this out is because when it gets really warm, it doesn't do very well in the extreme heat. So, um, it's going to need to be cleared out anyways, but I've let it go this long and it looks fantastic. So really cool to see that do so well. Here we have our burgundy iceberg rose that just came into bloom. Super like full of blooms and look at this color right here. Isn't that really nice? And the backside of the blooms have like a different color than the front side, which is really cool to see. Um, these are what we call a floribunda rose, which means that when they bloom, they're on, instead of being singular stemmed, they have multiple blooms coming on the very end, six, seven blooms on one stem. And that's what classifies these as a floribunda rose, or at least what I understand anyways. Um, and they grow in a more bush-like um, habit and um, they bloom like crazy and they do really well here at the back corner. On this side over here, we have our Floribunda Rose, and this is Pink Iceberg, which is almost out of its bloom cycle, but it's still kind of putting out a little bit here. Here's one here, right there. 
and you can see that dark pink on the inside on the outside it's more like a white and Ben's giving you some uh, close-ups of this rose really pretty isn't that nice all right and here in the middle is kind of like our pride and joy this is our David Austin Benjamin Britton rose which I mean, it's never looked like this. It's almost like a cabbage rose. I know it's not classified as that, but it's an English rose for sure. And you should smell this thing. It has a very light citrus smell to it. And it's just full of blooms on here. Deep, I don't know what you would classify. That's almost like a magenta pink or a dark pink. You can see the center right there. Bees love this and it's just like full of blooms. This thing is a lot of fun to see grow every year, but when you have to cut it back, it is loaded with thorns so i want to make sure that i have my special gloves on here every time i trim this back because it will get you if you're not watching um but yeah doing great and in between the roses i don't know if you can see this on both sides i have our white gladiolas that are about ready to shoot their bloom stalks up along with some weeds that have to be cleared out but i mean that's going to be beautiful to see those gladiolas bloom when these roses are finished so I was just talking about the gladiolas and the mic went out. So that's why it's a little bit different light right now because the sun is just right there in between. But anyways, I was going to tell you, on either side I have my Japanese boxwood that's doing great. And I'm probably not going to trim those back. I'm going to let them be a little bit wooly for a while because I do want them to get a little bit bigger in their spots. But it is nice because it gives me a really nice foundation for both sides of the planter back here or the flower bed and it gives me some structure with um, evergreen on the end and then the blooms in the middle so looking forward to fixing this area up after that bloom cycle is finished and then putting something new in there which will be great okay so the garden oh actually let me talk about these first because i don't think i talked about these yet <laughs> these are my super bells dream sickle and super bells double blue looking so great together i mean look at down the line there they're so beautiful you guys doing great really pretty um these double blue and they're called double blue because you know i guess they give a blue hue when they're in the shade but they really are purple two different colors of purple the dark and the lighter lavender on one bloom um, on one plant i should say and then the double extra little petals on the inside really cool and then with that we have the dream sickle which is two years old and again i had something else planned for these pots but they came back beautifully so they're going to stay for a while anyways I'm going to find some spots for the new annuals for sure. Um, looking beautiful. Um, they're relatively small pots. Um, I know we want to always try to find the biggest container possible when we're planting our annuals, but they seem to do really well in just a normal size pot because the bracket that I have that's off the fence there is only a certain size so i am limited on the size pot that they're in but they all of them are all on drip and i do fertilize them once a week starting in the spring so um, and i've started that process now and with the heat coming and with the sunnier days that we've been having they seem to really love that and they're doing really great so they're going to stay for a while they look great something else to look at besides a plain block wall when you say um, anyways down here in the raised beds that we put in a couple of years ago ben planted a german style potato there a german style roasting potato and then in the front he started from seed the red leaf lettuce along with the romaine on this side all started in a seed cell container and then just recently we planted those in a couple days ago actually so this is going to be really productive i'm looking forward to seeing how these do because we came in with land and sea compost along with some garden tone fertilizer and put in a little bit more of the raised bed um, uh, soil to get them to where they are right now because they do compact down a little bit over time and so it was kind of cool to recharge these beds a couple weeks ago and get them ready for the spring and the summer and the fall all right moving on we have our lime tree which is in this container right here um, and it's it was full of blooms and I think it's about ready to set some fruit inside a lot of the um, potting soil has compacted down pretty low it's probably about half full so once it's done setting its fruit we'll probably lift that up put a little bit more soil in there to give it a little bit more area for root growth because as it is right now it's very limited so we'll probably take care of that in a while but it is doing well which is great 
right here on the teepee trellis, we have two cucumbers, and this is a small variety of cucumbers. I don't know exactly which variety it is right now. Right here, we have our red and brown onions that Ben planted from a seed set a couple of months ago, along with some um, garlic and our daffodils that have definitely been beautiful this year um, and are naturalizing. So I think next year I'm going to have to come through and thin this out a little bit because they are a beautiful variety. Um, they have on each of their blooms, they have like three or four little tiny blooms on them. And it was just beautiful to see this thing bloom this year. So probably going to uh, thin that out a little bit so I can spread those somewhere else and they'll just continue to naturalize every year, I'm sure. On this side, we have our brand new Proven Winners um, Basil. And this variety is Besto Pesto. We ordered those seeds from Proven Winners, started them in a seed cell um, a couple of months ago, and now they're ready to plant. We just planted those today along with some jalapenos, which is supposedly an early setting um, jalapeno. So it's going to be great. We haven't watered these in yet. We just planted them a few moments ago, actually, and along with a couple more of the um, romaine lettuce right there. So that's going to be cool to see how this garden um, progresses over the next coming months. So now moving on to these pots, I'm going to transplant these boxwoods in a couple of weeks in a bigger pot so I can plant annuals around the base of them. Um, but these are not a Japanese boxwood. These are just like a regular variety. I think we picked them up at Home Depot, but they've done really well. And I think they deserve a bigger pot. So I'll be doing that in a couple of weeks and creating a video on what these look like when I'm done with them. And then of course we have this beautiful display of yellow and pink blooms. And this Cherry Star Super Bells has the yellow throat along with the little star that goes out to the end of the bloom there. That looks really nice against the Super Bells yellow. I mean, guys, this is so beautiful. This is a relatively old plant as well. I planted this about two years ago. It's on a stand right here. It's only two different plants in this one container. Container is probably about that big. Um, I had planned on taking this out because I thought it was fizzling out last fall. And so I ordered something in the meantime for this as well. And then this is what happened. So um, fertilizing it, keeping it healthy and letting it go until it is time to replace it. But I couldn't bring myself to replace this thing. It looks so nice, you guys. Wouldn't you agree? I love that thing. All right, right here we have our Chrysler Imperial Rose, an old variety tea rose that smells so beautiful. Very strong fragrance, beautiful blooms. They open to this color and they start out this deep, almost burgundy um, color, deep, deep red. Um, an old variety that has been around for many, many years. Um, I'm not quite sure when it first came out. I want to say probably the... 40s maybe um, but beautiful and on a tea rose you have one bloom per per stem for the most part every once in a while it shoot it will shoot off extra blooms but tea roses are just a great garden variety that everybody should have in their garden for sure and this is one that definitely deserves to be in this garden because we love the smell of this rose really neat Right here we have our ficus tree that we transplanted a couple of years ago. I just trimmed this back because last fall it got white fly like a vengeance and basically zapped it of all of its leaves. It lost all of its leaves and I feel like the white fly may have brought in disease to this plant. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that happen. You know, you think that you have everything under control in the garden and something like this happens and you just have to deal with it. Um, so I trimmed it back. It looks like it's sprouting out leaves here. And if these leaves hold and they do well, then maybe it will survive. But if it doesn't and it's just sickly, then I'll probably have to uh, get rid of it, which would be really sad because this tree here is like 40 years old. I remember being a young kid um, purchasing this at Kmart of all places, garden center and planting it in a container for our front planter at my mom's house when I was a little kid. Um, so, that would be sad to see this go, but if it does, we, we tried. And we'll plant something else that will do really well in this area. But we hope it survives. Oh my goodness. And then of course, this Super Bell's great punch, you guys, in a hanging basket. I mean, 
so beautiful, just like completely loaded in blooms. I mean, you can't even see hardly any green leaves at all. And this was another one that I had intended on replacing this year. Ordered some Proven Winners annuals in the fall to put in this hanging basket as a replacement. And then spring hits and this happens. And now, my goodness, look at that. So it's going to stay for a while. Beautiful. Superbell's Grape Punch, one of the best um, Super Bells that I know of, really, but they all do well. I keep saying that, but they really do well. One of the best colors anyways, that deep purple color, beautiful. All right, and over here we have the Super Bells Double Twilight, new for last year, doing great. Another one that I thought I was gonna replace, then it comes back like this. So it's gonna stay for a while. And underneath we have our mini boxwood with some yellow violas that I just had some extra ones and I popped in there and they've done great through the winter and in the early spring, but they're getting kind of spindly. So it's almost time to replace those. In the meantime, we'll find something else for them. And of course, Millie. <laughs> Over here in this area, we have our red amaryllis. Ben and I repotted this a couple of years ago. I think it's been about a year ago now or two years and they continue to naturalize and spread looking beautiful every year this time of year. I know that most of the amaryllis that we see to purchase comes out in the winter because a lot of people give those as gifts for Christmas but this is really the time of year that they bloom and without fail usually at the end of April they bloom and we always look forward to that. I don't have a lot of red in the garden. I used to, um, but I'm not getting rid of these just because they're a different color because I think it all kind of works together. I don't really pay close attention to color rules. The more color we have, the better, which is great. Down here in front, we have another one of those dream sickle. Right behind it, we have this black pearl heuchera that's pushing blooms. Heuchera are beautiful. I mean, those leaves, I mean, they really are almost black. Look at that. And the back side of them is almost like a, I don't know, like kind of a berry color or a, or a deep purple, but really nice foliage. And you really do grow these for their leaves, not so much for the blooms, which are, I'll show you another plant that's blooming in just a moment. And over here we have the Super Bell's yellow, which is doing beautifully, literally hanging at about two and a half feet from the bottom of the window seal, which I mean, so beautiful. Um, definitely can't replace that one because, I mean, it's just like looking glorious. So fertilizing that once a week and obviously Super Bell's yellow is a mainstay. I know that they recently this year came out with a yellow improved. I don't know what there was to improve because that looks pretty amazing, but I'm sure they had a reason. And so it's going to be great to see how the new ones do in the garden. I do have a couple of those that I'm going to plant this year. We have our Super Bean and Peach and Keen that we talked about a couple weeks ago. We have our Tower Boxwoods here along with the yellow and yellow and white violas that were doing really well. They're kind of becoming a little bit spent, so they'll be cleared out soon. I think I'm going to put the Surefire White Begonias in this area. But back to the Hukra. This is their blooms that they have. A lot of people do not grow them for their blooms, but they are pretty and they are lacy and they do look nice. And when they're done, you just cut them back. Um, but yeah, let's go over here and take a look at one of my last hanging baskets in the backyard. So before we get to the hanging basket, we have another tower boxwood here in this container. And I've underplanted that with some ranoculas that are, I'm sure are going to be beautiful. Can't wait for those to bloom. And when they're done, we'll underplant those with some other annuals, I'm sure. But this hanging basket, guys, look at this thing. This thing looks beautiful. Come around here, Ben, and you can see all those different colors. We have the Super Bina Peachy Keen and the Super Bell's Cherry Star, along with the Super Bell's Grape Punch. All of these colors together growing beautifully. They contrast each other and they do make a huge impact in the garden for sure. Um, I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit of a budworm in this as well. Like this flower right here has um, been clearly eaten by something, which tells me it's that time of year to start preventively spraying everything so that I don't have a complete decimation of all my blooms because they will attack everything and you'll have a beautiful green plant with no blooms and we don't want to have that. So I will come in with BT and spray this once a week so it keeps all of those harmful caterpillars at bay. And that BT that I'm talking about is an organic insecticide, which means it doesn't harm any beneficial bugs or birds or wildlife or things like that. They're, it's um, very specific to the caterpillars that eat the buds. So that's kind of nice to know that as well. 
We have our new fountain that we just put in. I'm probably going to find a different place for this, maybe in between two containers in this area when I clear out my, or when I plant all of these annuals here. I mean, really. <laughs> and then right here we have our beautiful um, blueberry bush that's loaded with blueberries. And uh, this is its second year, and every year it puts on more and more fruit. So looking forward to that when they ripen. Over here we have our yellow sonnet snapdragons that had seeded itself into that pot. I had two huge containers in this area last year um, and that little pot was in the middle of them and before I knew it when I cleared them out in a couple uh, weeks after that I noticed that it was seeded and growing and that's what we got. So those will grow all summer. When the shoots are done and when they're spent I'll just cut them and they'll continue to grow from the bottom which is I think really pretty in the garden so it's always nice when things surprise you in the garden they come back from seed and you didn't anticipate it and plus it's free which is great free beauty love that right here we have our uh, yellow sun flare rose which is a floribunda rose and what I mean by floribunda is lots of blooms on one stem so you're gonna have these cluster of yellow blooms that will look absolutely beautiful looking forward to that and that was fertilized with some rose tone and a little bit of land and sea as well to really give it the boost because it is in a container and it's always great to give our containers nutrients because they leach out water and if we don't feed them then they don't grow like they should so don't forget that it's really important and that i know that you guys are going to be really excited to see what happens when i plant this uh dwarf boomerang purple lilac. I talked about that in my last video and we plan to put this in the back garden as a beautiful shrub. Since it is small it won't get too big and then also in the back garden we're going to plant this pinnacle hydrangea which is the um, I think it's the little quick fire I believe. Let's see here yes little quick fire hydra pinnacle hydrangea and it's grown back beautifully and it's ready to be planted so we'll be planting these two shrubs in the back garden soon hopefully this is something new we picked up this raised bed from aldi of all places and we have radish planted here in the front we have a little bit of sage there growing finally <laughs> and then we have cilantro and then the good-hearted um, tomato and we have this up in this because the good-hearted tomatoes they don't grow very tall they tend to hang over and if it hangs over in this area that's totally fine it's totally different than other tomatoes sweet as can be we grew these last year from seed just like this one um, these are from proven winners by the way and we put them in a place where they kind of got in like taken over by other plants so we figured this is a good spot for it so it can kind of hang over right here and nothing's going to take it over or cover it up and hopefully it does well there along with some more seedlings right here but looking forward to seeing how this all does together it's kind of cool to have something raised like that never tried anything like that before so we'll see all right so that's it for the backyard let's go ahead and take a look at the front and i'll talk to you about some of the plans that we have going on out there all right everybody we're in the front yard and as you can tell these beautiful iceberg floribunda roses are in full bloom doing what they do best four times a year most of the time. I mean, I love these things. And on both ends of the white, we have our Simplicity Pink Roses right over there. They're just about out of their bloom cycle, but they still are looking beautiful. Um, one thing that I really love about these roses is when I don't have my annuals planted, there's always something in there. So I can always count on these to perform when I'm in between whatever I have planted in front of them. And if you remember, I have tulips planted every spring in this big, huge planter. This year we planted 600 tulips. And in a moment, a couple days actually, I'm going to plant our annuals for this year, which is the Superbina Whiteout and also the Supertunia Vista Snowdrift. And I'm going to alternate those plants so I have two different types of bloom heads. And hopefully it'll be a nice sea of white when the roses bloom and then down underneath. And that's something new that we've we've never done that before. So it's going to be cool to see it all white. We may, we may not like it. But the cool thing about gardening is you try something. If you like it, then you remember that. You do it again. But if you don't like it, then you can try something different. Last year we had Jazzberry in here, Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry, and also Super Vienna Imperial Blue. So over here we have our Japanese boxwood. We have all these right here and those over there. And I probably let them grow a little bit wooly for a while and then eventually come in and tighten them up. Maybe when I plant my annuals, not sure if I'm gonna do that or not. But over there in the corner, you can see the surefire rose begonias that are still there after two and a half years, which is amazing. 
speaking of these annuals that I'm planting every year, just the Proven Winners brand in general, they are so hardy. They are tried and true. I can tell you right now from planting years and years, all kinds of plants, not just Proven Winners, the ones that are Proven Winners seem to do the best and they last the longest. So that's why I tend to go back to Proven Winners every time. Not that there's anything against any other plant brand or any other plants because I do, you know, have a variety, but I tend to always come back to those because when you make an investment in your yard, you want it to last. And those after two and a half years, that's truly amazing. I mean, we live in a climate where they can do that, but you know, just knowing that they're there after that length of time is amazing. So we'll be planting more over there very shortly. Speaking of hardy, I have two Supertunia Vista Silverberry that are coming down that I underplanted underneath our tree in the parkway a couple of years ago. Really crazy guys to have these things come back. I basically weed whacked this whole section um, last fall to clear it out because I had the leaves from the tree and I knew that the bulbs were going to be coming out very soon. And to have these things come back after being abused like that and look like they do, I mean, you that's what I'm talking about. These things are so hardy. The fact that they're coming back now is unbelievable. So I'm super excited to see what these do. I'll probably underplant with some other things, but those will stay for sure. I figure if they've made it through that much abuse, they're going to be totally fine to stay. They've earned their spot in the garden for sure. Um, and then I'm going to, of course, clear out the bulbs, which I've let basically die back so that the bulbs get their nutrients. But yeah, we have a lot of things that we have planned. Many, many annuals to plant, and I hope to plant those very soon. And I will give you, as always, updates on how everything's going. But as always, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for spending time in our small garden. I mean, we don't have a huge yard, um, but we can have a big impact in the area that we've been blessed with. And so we love sharing that with you. So thank you guys so much for being here today. And we'll see you again in the next video very soon. Bye-bye, everybody.